you will never live here the same way you came in jesus precious name we are still in our month of dedication and i'm going to quickly look at the scripture in john chapter 15 and in verse 16 john 15 16 he said he have not chosen me but i have chosen you that you should go and bring forth fruit that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you ask of the father in my name he may give it to you the lord bless his word in jesus name i am aware that uh, several miracles have happened today god has touched you in several ways and you are not going back the same please you'll give me a little time so that we can hear what god did in the lives of people and also a little time to announce to you the events ahead of us before you step out the subject is dedication to god in soul winning dedication to god in soul winning you have not chosen me but i have chosen you i ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you ask the father in my name he may give it unto you mark chapter 16 verse 15 all the way to verse 20 and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be done and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so then after the lord had spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of god and they went forth and preached everywhere the lord walking with them and confirming the world with signs following somebody say amen dedication to god in soul winning we have three objectives number one understanding the purpose or reason for soul winning Number two, understanding the profit or benefit of soul winning. Number three, understanding the practice of soul winning. Again, number one, understanding the purpose or the reason for soul winning. Why would we go out to win souls? Why should we be interested in the souls of others? Number two, understanding the profit or the benefit of soul winning. Benefits. What is God just trying to use us? Is there any promise attached and then number three understanding the practice of soul winning it's important to note by way of introduction that soul winning is a very crucial aspect of dedicated christianity 
is a crucial aspect of dedicated Christianity. No Christian can be confirmed to be dedicated who is not interested in the winning of souls. Soul winning was the bedrock of apostolic Christianity. The bedrock. The early apostles, soul winning was their bedrock. Like I said, Dedicated Christianity is synonymous with soul winning. Paul the Apostle was so passionate to win souls until he cost himself. In 1 Corinthians 9 verse 16, he said, Necessity is laid on me. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Let the curse be upon me if I preach not the gospel. He was speaking to Timothy. He said, preach the word. Second Timothy chapter 4 and in verse 5. Instant in season. Watch thou in all things. Let's start from verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Somewhere else say, preach the war. Instant in season, out of season. There was a time when we came to the Lord in the late 70s and then 80s. It was almost a sin for a Christian to go out without a track, without tracks in the pocket. You felt as if you have sinned. It was almost as if you have sinned. If you sat inside a vehicle and you didn't preach the gospel. That was how urgent it was. Preach the gospel. He said, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. The question is, what why is soul winning necessary? Why should we be dedicated to soul winning? I will give five reasons. Number one, the salvation of souls is the priority of God. It is God's preeminent priority. Soul winning is the heartbeat of God. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 11. God made it clear. He said go get them to them of the captivity. Unto the children of thy people. And speak unto them. And tell them thus say the Lord God. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. And the spirit took him. And he went. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9 he said the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but God is long suffering toward us not willing that any should perish, but that all, all Buddhists, Hindus, people of the other religion, all should come to repentance. That is the heartbeat of God. It is such a heartbeat of God that God sent his son for the salvation of souls. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It was such a heartbeat of God that he sent the Holy Spirit for the sake of soul winning. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon me. 
And the aim of it is not just to use it to just pray in tongues or just impress people that you can pray in tongues. The aim of it is that you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Soul winning is the heartbeat of God, the salvation of souls. That is why we go out. Because if you want God to be interested in what interests you, you must be interested in what interests God. Why is dedication to soul winning necessary? Number one, the salvation of souls is God's priority. Number two, the salvation of souls is a trigger for joy in heaven a trigger for joy in heaven Luke chapter 15 verse 10 Luke chapter 15 and in verse 10 he said likewise I say unto you there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented thank God for miracle signs and wonders Thank God for blind eyes open, deaf ears hearing. But I never read in the Bible that for every lame man that walk, heaven will rejoice. That for every deaf ear that heard, heaven is happy. That doesn't, that, that, that wasn't there. But he said for every sinner that rejoices, there is jubilation in heaven. That is, soul winning makes heaven happy. And whatever a man sows, he shall reap. Is God speaking to somebody here at all? Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. That shall he reap. You cannot sow joy in heaven and not reap joy on it. You cannot make heaven happy. And any devil can be making you sad. The easiest way to your personal happiness is to enjoy, is to ensure that you contribute to happiness in heaven. Every time we stand and we say, how many of you want to give your life to Christ? And people come out to give their life to Christ genuinely. You have thrown a party in heaven. A jubilee in heaven. Every time you preach to your colleague in the office and they give their life to Christ, you have, you have, you have triggered something in heaven. Every time you, you led your relations to Christ or your brothers, your sisters, you have triggered something in heaven. Why are we dedicated to souls? There is joy in heaven. Number three, the salvation of souls is the rewarding of the travail of our or the travails of our master the salvation of souls is the rewarding of the travails of our master as we win souls we are ensuring that he didn't suffer in vain he didn't suffer on the cross of Calvary in vain. That his suffering was not in vain. We bring satisfaction to his labor. How many of you know that Jesus suffered for the sake of the salvation of the lost? In Isaiah chapter 53 verse 11. He said, he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. He said, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities he said jesus christ is looking forward to seeing the reason why he suffered being fulfilled so he can be happy whenever you you reach out and you are winning souls you are telling jesus they didn't beat you in vain they didn't spit on your face in vain they didn't pull your beards in vain you are saying, Master, I am one of those who will ensure that you did not labor for nothing. You didn't suffer for nothing. You did not bleed for nothing. And can I tell you something? If you say that the Master 
should not labor in vain. Is there any devil that can make you to labor in vain? If you say, Jesus, I refuse for you to suffer in vain. I refuse for your suffering on Calvary to be wasted. If you say that, is there any devil that can make yourself to suffer for nothing? Somebody said, no one. No devil. And so if we say that the master should not labor in vain, there is no way the devil can make us labor in vain. So what is the purpose of soul winning, number one? The salvation of souls is God's priority. Number two, the salvation of souls is a trigger for joy in heaven. Number three, the salvation of souls is the rewarding of the travails of our master. Number four, the salvation of souls is the rescue of multitudes from the torment of hellfire. The rescue of multitudes from the torment of hellfire. Psalm 9 verse 17 says, The wicked shall be turned to hell. And all the nations that forget God. Beloved, hell is real. Heaven is real. And hell is real. And hell is a place of unimaginable torment. It's a place that was not prepared for man at all. Man was not wired to handle hell. Hell was prepared for Satan. Matthew chapter 25 and in verse 41. The Bible talked about hell. Then he said, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire that was prepared for the devil and his angels. When you are committed to soul winning, you are on a rescue mission. How many people can I pull from hell to heaven. One day I preached the message titled Hell is Real. Anybody was in service that day? It was in the Area 1 church. Hell is Real. I think it was in the second service that I gave an altar call and everybody came out of the, in the altar call. And a young lady on that altar call collapsed right on that altar there. And they carried her out. The ushers carried her out. And when they wanted to carry her, they thought she had fallen under the anointing. And they realized this was not a fall under the anointing because one person couldn't lift her up. It took almost three, four, four persons and took her to the outside there. Literally lifeless. After I finished the service, the first service, I went at the back there because it was very, very strange. Somebody coming to the altar to fall down right on that altar to die like that. And I went there, tried all, everything, she was not alive. There's something we call Glasgow Coma Scale, where you measure a person that is unconscious. And I, and I, and I tried with my medical knowledge, and she was not responsive at all, which means she was five over five unconscious. Is she breathing at all? I tried to check the pulse, very faint. And then I screamed, this girl, lady can't die just like that. Satan, lose your grip, come back. Then she screamed and came. And I said, thank you, Lord. And then I went and continued for the second service. Later on, they told me, that while she was there and she collapsed, she found herself going somewhere and she came to a junction. And at that junction, she saw people light somewhere, people jubilating and celebrating. And then she saw another place, people screaming and screaming, majorly young, young girls and young boys and other such people screaming in torment in fire. And she saw an angel at that junction. And she looked and he said, I want to go there where the people were jubilating and the angel said, look at your dress, it is dirty. You cannot go there. This is where you belong. It was in that 
discussion that I prayed and I said, come back. And her journey was arrested. Hell is real. Everybody who doesn't know Jesus is on a road to hell. Am I communicating? God showed someone a vision. I think it was Maurice Cerullo. And he said he saw a troop of multitudes walking in a straight line. And they were just living carelessly and aimlessly until they come to the brink of a deep hole. Until they realized it was hell they were going. And then before they could reverse, they had already entered. And they were just trooping there in mass. We need to win souls. The devil is doing a lot of overtime in our generation. Am I communicating at all? How many of you know there are many people preaching for Satan right now? There are people who are convincing people never to go to church. Gathering people and pastoring and discipling them to hell. Let us be awake for the rescue of the salvation of multitudes from the damnation of hell. We go out to preach starting with our loved ones. Why is soul winning necessary? Number four, the salvation of souls is the rescue of multitudes. Number five, the salvation of souls brings honor to the almighty. Call it the salvation of multitudes brings honor to the almighty. Honor. In the book of Proverbs chapter 14, verse 28, Proverbs 14 and in verse 28, it said, in the multitude of people is the king's honor, but in the want of people is the destruction of the prince. God is honored when multitudes gather. In the multitude of people is the king's honor. But in the want of people is the destruction of the prince. Do you know how embarrassing it is for somebody to have an occasion and nobody came? Do you know how embarrassing it is for somebody's children to be more at home in the house of his enemy? than in their father's house. That is how it is. If multitudes are following the devil instead of God, it is a disgrace and a dishonor to the, to the creator. But if multitudes are pulled in the direction of God, more than the direction of the enemy, it is honor to God. Jesus Christ, everywhere he went, seaside, Wilderness, multitudes upon multitudes. Multitudes bring honor to God. Crowded assemblies over flooded brings, brings honor to God. It confirms to God who is in charge. Beloved, why is soul winning necessary? Number one, soul winning is the priority of God. Number two, the salvation of souls is a trigger for joy in heaven. Number three, the salvation of souls is the rewarding of the travails of our master. We are saying, Jesus, you can't suffer in vain. I will contribute to reap your harvest. The reason why you suffered, I will be part of it, bringing it. Number four, the salvation of souls is the rescue of multitudes from the torment of hellfire. We are saying we cannot watch our generation perish and go to hell. Number five, the salvation of multitudes bring honor to the Almighty. Having said that, I know somebody is going to go out to win souls. Question is, what is the profit of soul winning? Is there anything that a person who is winning souls, is there anything he has to enjoy from God? Number one, access to divine presence. 
and they went everywhere preaching and the Lord went with them that was Mark 16 verse 20 access to divine presence the presence of God is the companion of the soul winner. When you see a real soul winner, you feel God with him. And the presence of God is the ocean divider. Psalm 114, verse 1 to the end. So access to divine presence. Access to divine presence. That was number one. Number two, access to supernatural power in signs and wonders supernatural power in signs and wonders acts 1 8 you shall receive power after the holy ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me mark 16 20 and they went forth everywhere and preached and the lord was walking with them with signs and wonders following where you are a soul winner you have access to supernatural power you see miracles in your own life you see miracles in the lives of others access to divine presence to the presence of God number two access to supernatural power in science and wonders number three access to supernatural supplies access to supernatural supplies Peter toiled all night and caught nothing but he said nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net Luke chapter 5 verse 4 to 5 why he gave his boat his sheep to Jesus Jesus stood on his sheep and preached from it and because Jesus preached from it Jesus ensured that Peter did not go back home empty-handed is God speaking to anybody here at all supernatural supplies Luke chapter 22 verse 35 he said when I sent you without pause and scrip and shoes, did you lack anything? And they said they lacked nothing. He sent them to go and preach. Listen to this. When you work for God, he pays you wages. The work of God attracts the wages of God. The work of God attracts the wages of God. You are a civil servant, but God can still place you on his own salary. If you work for him and work very well, you can be begin to have income beyond your salary. That is not... Listen again. If you do his will, he pays your bills. It is proved. If you do his will, he pays your bills. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 24 to 27, Peter and the master were accosted by tax collectors as they were on assignment. And the master said, go to the river, take a fish, open his mouth, and you'll get money to pay for us. They were doing his will. He was paying their bills. Countless testimonies. One man here testified. When we sent, asked him to go out on evangelism, he was out on evangelism. Right on the evangelism place, they called him. A free car. Where are you? I am preaching. You have a vehicle? No. Come and take a car. Another one testified here. Multiple zeros in this current evangelism set going on. Multiple zeros. It will be eight or nine zeros of job contract. They said, come. He said, no, I'm, I'm winning souls. Meet me later. Diverse testimonies. Supernatural supplies. Access to supernatural supplies. Number four, access to divine wisdom. Access to divine wisdom. Proverbs 11 verse 30. Proverbs 11 verse 30. He said the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he that winneth souls is wise. Divine wisdom. He that winneth souls is wise. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. 
they that be wise shall shine as brightness and who are those he's talking about they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever those who turn many to righteousness must be wise there is a wisdom you connect to act to guide the affairs of your life from soul winning divine wisdom i prophesy that to somebody here if you are that one shout the loudest amen, amen. number five access to divine health and vitality john chapter 15 verse 3 he said start from verse 2 2 every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it that he may bring forth much fruit he said if you are a fruit bearing branch he will prune you to be more productive he won't allow you to be distracted by affliction such that you cannot do his assignment today I prophesy divine health for somebody in Jesus precious name if you are that one say louder amen, amen. you know Paul the Apostle was the rugged evangelist who said woe is me if I preach not the gospel that Paul the Apostle despite everything he passed through he lived until he became an old man Philippian Philemon verse 9 they called him Paul the aged Paul chapter 1 verse 9 Paul the aged Paul the aged despite all the things he passed through because he was such a rugged evangelist the devil could not take him out before his time somebody say aloud amen finally access to joy and fulfillment when he sent them out in Luke chapter 10 the Bible said in verse 17 the 70 returned again with joy joy first Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 19 he said what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing is it not you in the presence of our Lord Jesus at his coming the souls they want they are their joy the 70 return with joy there is something we call the joy of impact you don't know what it means to be excited until you know what it means to impact other lives is God speaking to anybody here at all your soul winning effort causes the sorrows of your life to be swallowed up what have we said so far what is the profit of soul winning number one access to divine presence God is with you and then it divides your oceans number two access to supernatural power in signs and wonders number three Access to supernatural supplies God pays your bills gives you your wages number four access to divine wisdom connection to how to do things and steps to take number five access to divine health and vitality number six access to joy and fulfillment what is the model what are the modalities for soul winning the practice of soul winning as we begin to round off it is one thing to desire to win souls but it is another thing altogether to know how to do it effectively how do you win souls what are the different modalities or approaches I have about five or so of them number one I call it number one friends and family outreach friends and family this is reaching out and sharing the good news to family members and friends first it's called operation andrew john chapter 1 verse 40 andrew one of the two which heard john speak and followed him was andrew Simon Peter's brother he first findeth his own brother Simon and said unto him we have found the Messiah 
which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Do you imagine? It was Andrew who brought Peter to Jesus. And Peter became the pillar of the early church. So there are people you are ignoring now that are meant to be pillars in the kingdom. Your brother, your friend. We don't know what became of Andrew. But Andrew brought his brother to Jesus. Don't ignore your family members. Don't ignore your primary school classmates, secondary school classmates, university classmates, people of your inner cycle. That is your first. Do you know what the Bible said? Look at that in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, verse 13 to 14. Acts 11. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood that and said unto him, Send men to Joppa. That was a centurion and call for Simon whose surname is Peter who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved thou and all thy house shall be saved Acts chapter 16 verse 31 Paul was speaking to the Philippian jailer he said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Paul was speaking to the prison officer that was guarding him in prison. He said, thou shalt be saved and thy house. But the man's house was not there. Am I communicating? The man's family was not there. But Paul said, you shall be saved and your family members what is the meaning of that god saves one person in order to save a household he saves a member of a family in order to save the family he saves a person in order to save his friends he saves a person in order to save those who are connected to them beloved your salvation is tied to other people's salvations. Many of my colleagues, university and at all levels, family members, that God has helped me to influence directly or indirectly, and many directly preaching the gospel, it is your turn. Friends and family outreach. Number two, testimonies, outreach. I put it like that. Testimonies, Outreach, testimonies and evidence outreach. Psalm 105, verse 1 to 2. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. What he has done, say it. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. This is evangelism. That was what the leper did in Mark chapter 1 verse 45. He was healed and he went out and began to publish it much and blaze abroad the matter in so much that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city but he was without in the desert places and they came to him from every quarter one man's testimony brought people from every quarter testimonies and evidence outreach you remember the woman of samaria john chapter 4 verse 28 to 30 he said come and see a man the woman then let her water pot and went away into the city and said to them Come see a man. He told me everything I ever did. Is this not the Christ? And the whole city, some say 40 something thousand people, went out of the city because of one woman's testimony. The testimony could be your own testimony. 
the testimony could be the type you heard this morning you love that was in church this morning i couldn't a woman that was blind for seven years everybody can tell a story not everybody may be able to preach but everybody can tell a story am i communicating just tell a story just say a story and those testimonies can be in the leaflet already printed we have some here and you, you take it out it is a test an outreach modality testimonies and evidence outreach number three are you still following me what i'm saying is it helping anybody number three is welfare or good works outreach this is where you are preaching the gospel by kindness welfare or good works outreach this is where you are using the love of god to touch the lost using the love of god to touch the lost matthew chapter 5 verse 14 to 16 he said you are the light of the world a city set on a hill cannot be here neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light to all them that are in the house let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven good works you remember Dorcas that died and was raised from the dead the bible said the, the widows and others brought the good works of Dorcas and they were showing it you are touching a widow's life touching a drunkard who is a poor, a poor man as well you are assisting somebody in the neighborhood and showing them the love of christ you know that woman that was caught in adultery in john chapter 8 it was kindness that saved her jesus said to her in verse 10 to verse 11 woman where are thine accusers has no man condemned thee he said no neither do i condemn you go and sin no more is god speaking to somebody here touching lives home church look into the neighborhood where you are see people that are stranded and frustrated are in need reaching out to them is a modality of soul winning number four church invitation church invitation this is the the the, the, the act of compelling people to come to the house of the law trusting that god will touch them as they come luke chapter 14 verse 23 luke 14 23 and he said the lord said unto the servant go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come that my house may be filled you are not saying anything so much oh um i want you to visit our church today the lord's God in the glory dome or oh, visit our church this is, be my guest this sunday i trust that god will touch you if you come and you don't feel anything you, you feel free to go back but i'd like you to join me this sunday and let's be together it is church invitation it is a modality of outreach compel them to come number five is power or miracles evangelism this is where you release the power of god or rather the deployment of the power of god for the handling of the challenges of people we saw it already acts chapter 1 verse 8 and mark chapter 16 verse 20. it's like hello sir the lord bless you i am here to speak with you and probably pray with you please um, i've seen god move I've seen him touch lives and i want to agree with you if there's anything at all you want me to pray with you about introduce yourself very well you look very decent and very very corporate and let him know where you are coming from all right then you pray and then but before i pray for you the most important thing i like to do with you is to ensure that the bible says seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness you lead them to christ go to the hospital go to the prison and where the needy people are 
or even on the road. Everywhere you are, there are people in need. It's power evangelism. And by the time you pray in agreement with people and God begins to touch them, they will follow you to where you are coming from and they will tell others. That is power evangelism. And finally, character evangelism. Character evangelism. This is the process of exhibiting exemplary Christian character or lifestyle before the ungodly. Trusting God to use your character to change lives. This is where we use our character to change the lives of others. It is the exhibition of the character of Christ. Acts chapter 11 verse 26 the Bible said the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 1 to 4. Read that. Say this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you be mindful of the words which are spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. All right, let's, let's look at First Peter chapter 3 from verse 1. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, if they don't hear your preaching, let them be warned. Let them, without your preaching, be warned by your conversation. That word conversation is ancient English for conduct. If any married woman, your husband does not want to hear your preaching, let him hear your character. Married man, your wife does not want to hear your preaching. Let her hear your character. Employee, your boss does not want to hear your preaching. Let him hear your character. Let's go on again. He said, that without the word, even if you haven't said anything, let them be won by the conduct of the wives. Give me another translation where it mentioned conduct or character or, com or maybe the New Living Translation or the Amplified or the Message Bible. If you have any of those translations. In the same way, you wives must accept the authority of your husbands. Then if some refuse to obey the good news, your godly lives will speak to them without any words. They will be won over. Your godly life in this, your godly life. Now another translation said, in the same way you wives must submit yourself to your own husbands so that if any of them do not believe God's word, your conduct will win them over to believe. It will not be necessary for you to say a word. That's character evangelism. Am I communicating? It's not just to wives. It is for everybody. Now, get, get me the second verse in the King James Version. While they behold your qualitative character coupled with fear. Verse 3. Whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of the plating the hair and of wearing of gold and of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. That which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So your concentration should not be external decoration, but internal fortification. He said, focus more on content, not just container. Am I communicating? So that your content will touch people. What you carry on the outside, on the inside, will impact lives. St. Augustine said, speak the gospel, preach the gospel all the time. 
and we are necessary use words and someone said unbelievers don't have bibles and even if they have they don't read them christians are the bibles that unbelievers read that is true christians are the bibles that unbelievers read i believe it's a new day for somebody what outreach modalities have we talked about first of all friends and family outreach second testimonies and evidence outreach third welfare or good works outreach four church invitation five power or miracles evangelism six character evangelism and as we do so the lord will bless us in jesus name finally to be effective in soul winning what do you do preparation for the soul winner for evangelism number one the fullness of the spirit possess the fullness of the spirit acts chapter 1 verse 8 he said you shall receive power after the holy ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto, unto me the fullness of the spirit be full of the spirit because you are battling and dealing with forces that don't want people to believe god the fullness of this of, of the spirit and number two the attitude of prayerfulness before you can spoil a good a good man's house the bible said you first bind the good man matthew chapter 12 verse 29 you first bind the good man you can sorry a strong man you cannot enter the house of a strong man until you bind the strong man if you are deliberately preparing to go out for evangelism pray before you go don't take anything for granted lord i take authority over the powers of darkness that will hold the people from hearing god and i receive the grace to preach and for for me to be heard and i thank you because they shall be heard in jesus precious name beloved it is a new season and it is a new day lift up your right hand and let us appreciate god appreciate god lift your hands and appreciate god father we give you the praise father we give you the honor father we give you the adoration we give you the worship blessed be your name in jesus precious name 